real lives and real testimonies to bring inspiration and hope to the world. There's so much more to the Christian life than just being married. There's not an official age when I decided to be a virgin. We're talking about biblical manhood plus fighting temptation. Welcome to Crystal's Corner. Hey guys, and welcome to Crystal's Corner. Today I have Janet. <laughs> Do you support genetics? And do I know genetics, you yes. Do know genetics. Okay, yeah. that's such a creative way to spin your name. Yeah. I really thought that was really creative. Thank you. But, y'all, I have the honor, the pleasure <laughs> of interviewing genetics. Or I'm your host, Crystal OG. And today we're going to be talking about genetics transition from singlehood to married life and now motherhood. Yeah. You ready for this? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so singlehood. Let's talk about singlehood a little bit. Yeah. What do you think prepared you most for your now husband? I don't think there was, to be completely honest, I don't think there's anything that could really prepare me for mm -hmm. my now husband. I think that there's a lot that you can do in preparation. Mm -hmm. You know, you go through, like, you know what I'm saying, when you get in a relationship, you go through marital counseling and all that. But I think just being a single woman, I think what really most prepared me was having somebody finally pursue me that was intentional. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think... Uh, and, and him being able to begin to lead in the relationship, mm -hmm. it wasn't so hard to kind of just be like, okay, what, what, what are we even doing here? Um, so a lot of that had to do with the preparation. But as far as like, uh, one thing that was really good is to have good, good, good accountability. Yes. Um, so during that time frame, I just, being a single woman, I had people who were able to like just grab my phone and look through it and, and see what was going on, what type of conversations I was mm -hmm. having, you know, people who could check up on me at any time. Just people who I really trusted, uh, other women in the faith, uh, uh, my age, older, who are really, really intentional with like yeah. looking into my life. And I think that as believers, we have to be prepared to live openly yeah. um, and live as openly as possible to be successful at just like thriving in our relationship with mm -hmm. Christ. Um, because I think sometimes we put too much past ourselves and like, oh, I would never, or I yeah. wouldn't. No, girl, you would. You would. And you, <laughs> you did. You caught slipping. <laughs> Don't get caught slipping. Yeah, man. No, I agree. Uh, what would you say encouraged you the most in that time? Um, I think the most encouraging uh, was finally being able to get to a place where the, the desire for marriage was not the focus mm. um, because I finally got to a place of just real peace yeah. um, and just pursuing like the things that God was able to really use me in in that time frame. Um, there are times even now as a married woman where I just I had to stop coveting those time frames yeah. of just being able to uh, even travel or even just pursue the goals that I had but also being able to pour into other young women mm -hmm. and to be able to um, just really, really, really I don't really, it's it's like when you stop focusing on like the issue at hand, which is like, mm -hmm. will I get a man? Am I going to get a man? Will I get a man? And you really allow God to saturate your life with yeah. what his will truly is. It kind of just becomes a thought, but it's a yeah. it's a back burner thought. It's not yes. a forefront thought. Yes. It's not a thought that consumes you all the time. Mm -hmm. So you do have those moments where it's a real reality where yeah. it's like, dang, I wish I could go out somebody. I wish somebody would just take me out or tell me I look nice or have somebody to talk to. And that's fine. But I also find that a lot of times the things that we really desire, we can actually gain those specific affections and certain types of affections from community and fellowship. Because yes. um, it's not always that you just want to be up on this person and be doing all these affectionate things, but sometimes you do just want somebody to talk to. And sometimes you do just desire to be in a specific position where it's just like, hey, I want some people to kick it with. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't, we don't really exhaust all our opportunities when it comes to... We don't exhaust all our opportunities when it comes to community and fellowship. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's yeah. good. I think that's a huge, like, I think area for single women too, just knowing that there's community, you know, yeah, available, yeah, yeah. and that, that helps the journey go by so much more smoother, because yeah. when you're alone, you're more prone to be attacked by the enemy, yeah. with those thoughts of, okay, I need a man, Absolutely. I've been lonely for too long, yeah. um, companionship is only found in a man, and maybe even your value is only found <laughs> in a man, right. Right. so it's like having those sisters that you can walk in hand with, or even having friends who are in relationships yes. where you can be like, hey sis, like, you know, how did you cope through this season? Like reaching out, being vulnerable, being that open book. I think it's so real and I think it's so yeah. important. And there really is so much pressure even hanging with our brothers when we, there's not this pressure that they, they can feel of like, are you the one? Are yes. you thinking about me this way? Are you wondering about me this way? It's like yes. when you just kind of like relieve yourself of that, it takes the pressure off of them and they're able to just kind of chill and see mm -hmm. for who, who you truly are. So you can mm -hmm. kick it with these brothers too, but not with this whole thought like, yeah. well, maybe he might be, maybe he might be, but maybe he's not. So right, he's, right. right. And I think I had to learn a lesson myself because I had the mentality of, okay, He's a man of God. Mm -hmm. He's chocolate. Right. He must be my Lord. Right. And I, I don't pick out my wedding dress. Right. I don't pick out what the colors of the flowers are gonna be. Exactly. Like that's not how it should be. And exactly. I had to really 
really take the verse about guarding your heart, even though it's talking about all the things, I had to take that into really like consideration in terms of I need to guard my heart and not awaken yeah. love before it's time. Yeah. So I literally had to make sure I had my hopes all the way down here. Like if it happens, praise God. If it doesn't, it's it's okay, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I think I had to hold on to that to not break my own heart and to also protect my heart and yeah. keep it where it needs to be, which is in the presence of God. Yeah. Uh, so I think that was a huge, a huge, a huge um, point for me as well. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's real. Um, so moving on to married life. Yeah. Yeah. So how how was that transition? I think you were you were um, you married at what age again? Thirty five. Thirty five, and yeah. that's I mean that's and it, people are already kind of like complaining around the thirties, like twenties. To, to right, right after college. You're very right. Yes, you're very <laughs> so right. waiting until thirty five to get married, what yeah. what do you think that did you think it helped you with your transition into marriage because you had learned so much in life? Or do you think it was still just as rough? I think um it might have been I think it's rough, but I also think it might have been rougher because I'm very mm -hmm. settled in my ways and the way I do things and the way I like things. Um and like after kind of being your own woman for so long, it's very difficult to kind of walk into like, you know what? Well, I'm, I'm going to trust you to lead this whole yeah. family and you make the decisions that are best for us. And it's just like, uh, I don't know how I feel about mm -hmm. that. Um, so it, it may have been a little bit rougher. I think also there's just a lot with my personal past. And I think that not fully engaging and dealing with the things that transpired in the past, whether that be through uh, counseling, yeah. which is like not really. It's just now being a thing that's mm -hmm. being not shunned upon when it comes to our culture Definitely. um because it's like if you just if you got an issue you better pray it off that's usually what it is and that's what it's mm -hmm. been but that reality of you having to deal with that for me sexual abuse it's like i didn't know that it was going to rear its head in an ugly mm -hmm. way and such a and take over such a large magnitude of my marriage yeah. and how i saw my husband it was just like it was just like it just started going downhill yeah. like quick and fast because I didn't deal with those issues mm -hmm. um, and it caused me to clam up and it's just like whoa I'm in this space with somebody all the right. time and he's with me when I wake up and he's with me when I, there's nowhere to run I yeah. want to go home but wait this is now my home so it, it was mm -hmm. it was a lot and a lot of it was rooted in fear um, and some of the stuff I'm still transitioning through but I think that it was really really tough and I think a lot of components uh, made made that whole whole thing up but I think there are some there are some good things about the waiting that in in my personal situation is just like you just kind of get through with it. It's like either it's gonna happen or it ain't gonna happen. You know, it's like it's, it's like twenties. It's kind of like oh maybe it's just like I really really. By the time you get like thirty something, and for me personally, I know some women are still like they really desire that. But when I got like in my thirties, it's like let me just start making some decisions for myself. Do I want to buy a house? What do I want? How do I fill up on my credit? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do I, where do I want to travel to? Sometimes people are waiting for those specific companions in order to experience yeah. life. It's just like, no, girl, experience yeah. life. Mm -hmm. Get a passport. Yeah. Have fun. Right. <laughs> right. right. Enjoy your so, life. Enjoy your life. Yeah. And yes. exhaust your life for the glory of God. That's you don't good. have to wait on somebody in order to do that. True. Yeah. I agree. Yes. Already, already spent. Already yeah. Spent. That's, that's so real. And I think that um, a lot of women struggle with being sexual abuse victims. Yeah. And, no, not really wondering what marriage is going to be like. So what would be your best encouragement for them <sighs> having those fears and maybe those insecurities or just that trauma from it? Yeah, um, and I love the fact that of uh, just the lane that you're getting into, especially mm -hmm. with um, all the education that you're getting yeah. because I feel like it, 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 if you can get, especially even biblical counseling as well, yeah. which is really helpful because it helps you to, it, it pairs scripture. Mm -hmm. It's like, so oh, I know that, but it's like, it helps you to make it real in your mind, which allows you to make it real in your heart, which allows right. you to walk it out. Mm -hmm. When I walked into counseling, I expected her to just take my side and to kind of like, tell me everything that was wrong with my husband. Mm -hmm. Right. and how he needed to be more patient with me but she literally like came for me and i was just like wait a second this, <laughs> this is not this, a, me? this is not what i saw on tv <laughs> maybe this i should lay down on TV. No. <laughs> no no and she was like hey this is this these are the issues that you're yeah. dealing with and you are insane mm -hmm. due to fear because mm -hmm. fear is not of god and this is the reality this is what scripture right. says and you're telling you're traveling the world telling people to trust god mm -hmm. but you don't really trust god and it's just like that just penetrated my poor little heart my little right. black heart so my advice would be like, man, even if you guys can do it together, I would say to be as open and honest with your partner as possible. I felt like it was something I could just suppress, handle on my own. And I was just going to be this freak when I got married. It's like, oh, watch when we get married, it's going down. And I just was the complete opposite, you know. And 
it's interesting because the way that we we desire love is not always the way that our mate receives love. Mm-hmm. And men, a lot of times, really receive love through intimacy. Yeah. And I'm just like, it just didn't make sense to me. I'm just like, it can't be that great, bro. It's good. It's wonderful. Yeah. But it's just like, it's not, it's not food. Mm-hmm. It's not water. Right. It's, it's like, you're not going to die, right. you know, without it. And, um, and, but at, I had to start focusing and seeing that, hey, this is the way he communicates to me that yeah. he needs love in this way. So I need to take it more seriously. Um, and sometimes that's hard because it's like you have to continue to expose yourself and be vulnerable. And I think just like if you could, if you have those issues, um, of course, paired with scripture, but also just really good. If you are open to getting really good counseling, I think it's it's only been, there's only served as a benefit for me. Right. I think that you're so strong, first mm-hmm. of all, for all that you've been through in terms of sexual abuse. I watched The Elevator, yeah. and I was just mind blown. Like I yeah. watched it over and over again. I'm just like, wow, yeah. this is powerful. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely going to link that video below because I feel like that's a topic that is especially hot right now, the mm-hmm. whole Me Too movement, yeah. and women are just becoming re-traumatized by yeah. all of the social events and political events that are kind of feeding into and we don't have, And we're not tr- giving them a source to look back to. We're just kind of like, okay, Me Too, okay, now what? Now that we all know yeah. that this happened to us, What's now next? what? So me now do we all just jump in a pit of Me Too? Yeah. Like, no, like, how do we come up out of this? And yeah. how do we, who, who do we go to? Yeah. And who do we rely on? And where do we gain strength from? Like, that's the difference between just the Me Too movement and us, is that we have Christ and we have someone to to really just, who sympathizes with us and helps us to really, even in marriage, it's like, it's this whole world of vulnerability that's like, you've gone into this world of having to protect yourself your whole life, all this time, and now you're finally coming to a place like, you know, I don't have to live in that mindset anymore, but I've lived in this mindset my whole life, so now I have to take the layers and start to begin to pull them them away so it's definitely a transition yeah. but i believe it's so worth it yeah i yeah. agree i agree i think you're so strong because <laughs> been through a lot but you here yeah. by the grace of god definitely. all right let's talk about my daddy mm-hmm. what do you what do you have you nicknamed her well i mean it's always like uh always different when she's in trouble it's a mars mahogany you mm-hmm. know um the full name. it's the full <laughs> name you know um but most of the time it's just mars or mars oh, i like calling her mars, mars but i feel like she's so just cute. from a different planet oh. <laughs> but but um she's oh Oh, man greatest gift that I could probably have ever received yeah, yeah yeah that's amazing I know I know I followed the journey mm-hmm. of having her yeah. and that was kind of very tough very tough yeah, yeah I, I praying for y'all because I was like you. she's gotta get here right right she's gotta make it y'all don't understand like those prayers man I believe in the power of prayer yeah. and um I was like I, it, I may not be Nigerian but I'm saying <laughs> I my grandma my grandmother taught me the power of prayer and I feel like that's something that's not as it's like I think we're big on theology right now. Big on mm-hmm. discipleship. Big, big. But how much do we time to take this stop yeah. and really, really pray and pray fervently for right. those who are not directly connected to us via family, via right. community. Mm-hmm. And so to have those prayers, like I can't. You don't even know. Like yeah. I know that she exists on those prayers. Right. Right. Yeah. Do you want to explain a little bit about what happened to her and the process? Yeah. I mean, well, for one, I had pre-existing high blood pressure, and then just I just had a miscarriage prior to that mm-hmm. on tour during the wow. show in the middle of the show. Um, and so I was already fearful for going into it because I was like, I'm older, you know, I'm, I'm worried that I may not be able to carry a child to term. Um, and just all this weight and pressure. And um, so she, at 24 weeks, I was hospitalized for 10 days. They tried to deliver her twice and they were like, we're going to have to do it. I have to deliver her. I was like, please, God, if you could just get me to 30 weeks, I know that would be so much better than 24. Um, got to 29 weeks and six days and I went for a checkup and the doctor was like, you know what? Her heart rate's kind of dropping a bit. I think we're just going to deliver her this weekend. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Told my mom, you know, she's like, you want me to come? I was like, no, I'm good. But she she had that intuition and she came anyway. Thank God. Because, <laughs> you know, literally as soon as I got into the hospital bed, like she started, I started contracting. And wow. she came and she was one pound, like one pound, 13 wow. ounces. And I, I'm telling I couldn't even, all I saw was his itty bitty feet. My doctor said it was the smallest placenta you'd ever seen. She was in the NICU for 54 days. And it was just like, it taught, taught me a, a, just a greater level of faith. Um... But it was it was hard because my life was threatened. They were saying like you may not you're probably not gonna live. She's probably not gonna live. And my husband would not get shaken. It would it, it irritate me. He was like, are you concerned about me? Do you care about me living through this thing? He's like he's like I'm I'm good. I was like, well why are you good? He's like, Jeanette, it's called medical practice. That's this this practicing. They don't know what's true. They don't know what's real. I'm like oh my gosh. So he was he was sure. I mean he was sure. He, he was consistent, quiet. He was my rock. Um, and just was sure that God was going to do his thing, you know, right. and you need that because both of us can't be freaking out. Right. You know, right. but that's, and, and the Lord got me to 29 weeks and six days Praise just to kind of let me know he's still God. Right. You know, and um, it, it was definitely a tough time, but 
to see her now and to just see her running around mm -hmm. and just like just oh my gosh it's crazy right no yeah like a blessing in walking form literally yeah. literally yeah. what would you say be, would be your hardest transition into motherhood um realizing how weak i am i think um after having an emergency c-section um there was a day when i just wanted to I, I wanted to go to see her but i was in so much pain um i couldn't get my i couldn't get any medicine because they wrote the prescription on the wrong type of paper all kind of stuff and i was just in so much pain and i was trying in my mind I, I felt like there would be nothing no amount of pain or anything that could keep me from getting to her mm -hmm. And then I was jealous of the fact that my husband could just get up and go, but then I was grateful that he could go. And I was just so broken. And I, was just, I felt like I was failing already. And I think um, the Lord was just showing me like how strong he is, even in my weakness. Um, so I think it's just this whole transition has been, it's been good for me. Um, and I think that I've, I'm learning to, to value it so much more than anything else. And I say I'm learning because there are moments where I was like, sometimes you're still selfish and she was like, I can do this, I can do that. But it's like, no. You're a mom, but it's, being a mom is like the most unthank you, <laughs> non thanks job ever. It's like, I'm vomiting all over you. And it's like, okay, I'm going to, whatever you need, I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. And there was one day <clears throat> where she was walking and she just almost went up the step and I grabbed her and she was like, in shock. And I was like, I got you. Like, you, I always got you. And literally the Lord just convicted me. He's like, that is how I feel about you. Like, mm -hmm. you don't need to walk because I always have you. If you feel this affection towards your child in human yeah. form, can you imagine you know, me, God, the one who gave up his son for you. Wow. Like, I have you and I always have you. Wow. And I'm just like, thank you, <laughs> You know, it's just like one of those sessions. So, yeah. man, that my my heart feels like it's expanded um, wow. to just, uh, just a different degree that I never even knew. Yeah, no, yeah. that's that's amazing. I think yeah. for me, right now, I'm like, oh, motherhood. Like, I just yeah. think about the loss of autonomy. Yeah. Because I, I just, I hate losing control. Because yeah. I, I feel like if I lose control, then who's going to be in control? But yeah. God is going to yeah. be in control. Exactly. And I just have to trust that his plans for me are perfect mm -hmm. and they're good. Even when they don't feel like it. Even when they don't feel yeah. like it. Yeah, I think like the like a really cool thing like is just um, the way that God continues to just carry us through those situations. Even when we don't even realize we're being carried. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just like that whole aspect of trust like it, that talks about in, in Psalm 9, 9, and 10. It's like when God being the one who is, uh, is like caring and being de endearing to those that are the oppressed. It's like, and those who, who know your name put their trust in you because right. you have not forsaken those right. who seek you. And it's like, man, like that is my job to be seeking after right. you. Like seeking after you and seeking and seeking after you, then my trust for you will build. Yeah. But if I don't, I'm not seeking after you, then I don't even know the power of who you are right. because I'm not even bearing my face in scripture to really mm -hmm. be reminded mm -hmm. of your promises, to be reminded of, the, the, just the amazingness right. of what you've already done and what you continue to do and who you will forever be mm -hmm. so that in itself kind of puts me at ease even like I think yesterday my husband was like what's going on I know you did good but it didn't seem like how you that's like I didn't get my time with mm -hmm. him and so if it's not even on stage like I do not like feeling the disconnect mm -hmm. I can deliver a piece and y'all can be like yo that was dope and mm -hmm. you probably won't know the difference yeah. but if I feel that disconnect I'm like I'm just like Lord like I, <laughs> I don't right. feel it so <laughs> Just trying to be reminded that like he is so significant, um, and, and everything else is just yeah. yeah. And last part, your humility. You take your shoes off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I saw that somewhere. You're like, take your shoes off because you want to be reminded like mm -hmm. this is this is God's ground. This is God's ground. It's not mine. It's not belong to me. I don't even respond when people say your ministry because it's not. It's not my ministry. Not to thank my grandmother for that because right. she's the one that really instilled in me like. And remind like, look, this is not, I see you getting all these applauses. Mm -hmm. They do not belong to you. Do not receive them because they're not yours. So she's like, don't, don't jack God's glory now. Mm. I was like, okay. jacks your gift. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So it, it's just a reminder to me every time I look down at my feet, it's like, hey, just, right. you know, because it is hard. Like you guys are so loving and then have embraced me and you've been with me on the journey from right. being single to being, you know, in a relationship, mm -hmm. to being a wife, to being a mom. So it feels very much like you guys are all extended family. Right. It doesn't feel fanatical. No, I, I am. Fanatical. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't feel fanatical yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, but yeah. when I when I hear those mm -hmm. those applause and it's like we love you, genetics and all type of things, yeah. I just I have this insane cringe, fear yeah. of like, Lord, just let me glorify you and honor right. you. Don't let let the humility be genuine and don't let me take mm -hmm. 
mm. any of your glory from you. That's you know? good. I think let the humility be genuine is yeah. a key factor. Yeah. It's cool to be like, oh no, mm-hmm. you know, but then still be full of yourself and yeah. looking inside. But like, yeah. God, let my humility be genuine. Yeah. And let it be to your glory. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Oh man, that's some good stuff. You yeah. dropped some gems in this video. <laughs> you really have. You really have. I'm gonna go back through two years from now and watch it and be like, yes, oh, my genetics. <laughs> but guys, I hope you guys have learned so much from this interview with genetics, because I know I have. Um, she has spoken about her singlehood, um, her transition into motherhood, and also her transition into being married. So um, I'm so excited for you guys to just get to know her. If you don't know her already, I will Please. leave everything about her in my description bar below because her life is powerful. Like God is using her in so many amazing ways, and through it all, God, God will get the glory. So. Amen. So thank that. you so much for thank being you. Here. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.